Dr. Charles Darwin in his famous and influential book on the origin of species didn't really actually talk about how speciation occurs. And of course, if we want to understand this, we first have to understand what a species is and how we're going to define it. So one of the presiding or predominating species concepts is known as the biological species concept. And this is the idea that species are groups of actually or potentially interbreeding populations that are reproductively isolated from other such groups. So different species can't successfully interbreed. Um, so here I've shown a lightning bug to represent an example of behavioral isolation. Um, so in different species of lightning bug, the males have different flashing patterns and the females will only mate with the males that have the right pattern. Um, and then on the right is a mule, which of course is a classic example of uh, the hybrid sterility isolating mechanism. So in my research, I've been using Nisomia in order to study speciation and reproductive isolation. So Nisomia is a genus of parasitoid wasp, shown here. So the females lay their eggs in the pupae of certain flies. Um, in this genus, there are four morphologically very similar species. Um, in my experiments, I've been utilizing Nisomia like cornish, abbreviated L, and Nisomia vitropenis, abbreviated V. Another very important characteristic of Nisomia is that they have haplodiploid sex determination. So females have two copies of each chromosome, and they're diploid, and males are haploid, meaning they have one copy of each chromosome. So when a male and female mate, each daughter will get one copy of each chromosome from the mother and one copy of each chromosome from the father. But the sons will only get one copy of each chromosome from the mother, meaning essentially they don't have fathers. So if we want to study speciation and reproductive isolation in the semia, we first have to understand how they hybridize. So typically, after curing their Wolbachia infections, different species of Nisomia, here I've shown the Vitropenis and Longicornis, can successfully interbreed to form viable F1 hybrid daughters. Um, but usually these F1 hybrid daughters cannot successfully produce viable F2 hybrid sons. But around 2008, we noticed in the lab that Vitropenis and Longicornis could no longer successfully hybridize to form hybrid daughters, as shown in this figure. So this is the hybrid cross and as you can see, there are no resulting daughter as compared to the control cross. Same number of sons, because of course they're not hybrid. So this represents the, a new reproductive isolating mechanism. So what could be the cause of this hybrid mortality, of this new reproductive isolation? Well, we also know when we cross vitropenous males with longicornous females that all the resulting hybrid daughters die. But when we do the reciprocal cross, so cross a longicornous male with a vitropenis female, all the resulting hybrid daughters live. So we know hybrid mortality is dependent on the mother. So there are two explanations, two main explanations for this pattern. One, it could be, this hybrid mortality could be due to a mitonuclear incompatibility in which there's a deleterious interaction between maternally inherited mitochondrial DNA and paternally inherited nuclear DNA. Or this hybrid mortality could be due to a nuclear maternal effect in which there's some kind of deleterious interaction between some kind of product in the egg from the mother and the paternal nuclear DNA. We also know this variation is hyper mortality. So when we cross vitropenous males with these allied females, standing for longicornis incompatible, all their hybrid daughters die. But when we cross vitropenous males with LC females, standing for longicornis compatible, all their hybrid daughters live. So in order to determine the cause of the hyper mortality we're observing, I want to create two regression lines using this LI and LC strains. So this will show how exactly I generate these integration lines. So first I took an LC female and made it to an LI male. So here the outer color is representing the cytotype and the inner color is representing composition of nuclear DNA. I then took their daughters and made them to LI males, took their daughters, made them to LI males, and so on for seven total generations. So it could generate this LC LI integration line that has cytoplasm from LC and nuclear DNA of LI. I also set up the reciprocal cross, so I made it LI females with LC males, took their daughters, made them with LC males, and so on for seven generations until I generated this LI-LC and aggression line that has cytoplasm of LI and nuclear DNA of LC. So essentially through this integration, I was able to switch the nuclear genomes. Um, so then I wanted to use these integration lines and the pure strains figure out which of my hypotheses could possibly correct. So if this hyper mortality is due to a mitonuclear incompatibility, we expect, of course, LC females cross with vitropenous males, that all their hybrid daughters would live, as we've already documented. Um, and we would expect when we cross LC-LI females with vitropenous males, that 
all these hybrid daughters would live. And we expect, of course, when we cross ally females with a bigger penis males, that all these hybrid daughters would die, as has already been documented, and when we cross ally LC females with big penis males, we expect these hybrid daughters to die. So basically, hybrid death would correlate with the identity of the cytoplasm of the hybrid daughter. So all those with that LS cytoplasm would die. Um, if this hybrid mortality is due to a nuclear maternal effect, we expect, of course, same thing with this LC to vitropenis cross. But we expect when we cross these LC LI females with vitropenis males, that all these hybrid daughters would die. We expect the same result from this cross here, and we expect when we cross the LI LC females with vitropenis males, that all these hybrid daughters would live. So basically, if this hybrid mortality is due to a nuclear maternal effect, we expect to see hybrid mortality correlating with nuclear DNA of the mother. So this is showing the adult offspring for all those uh, crosses I just talked about. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of hybrid mortality in the LCLI to vitropenis cross, and there's no hybrid mortality in the LILC to vitropenis cross. So this is clearly lining up with this hypothesis and these predictions, and we clearly have to reject the mitonuclear incompatibility hypothesis. But there is a caveat to this based on experiments I performed last semester. So what I did last semester was I crossed LC females with LI males and LI females with LC males. And then I took their daughters and mated them to vitropenis. So what we would expect if this hybrid mortality is due to a nuclear maternal effect, we'd expect the same degree of hybrid mortality in these hybrid females as in these hybrid females. But that's not what we saw. We saw an asymmetric hybrid mortality even though the mothers had the exact same nuclear DNA composition. So what could possibly explain this? Well, we think it could be due to maternal imprinting. So imprinting is a phenomenon in which um, gene expression depends on the parent of origin. So basically, since these daughters, um, these females, their grandmother is LC, they can either get the expressed gene from LC that will not cause hybrid mortality, or the unexpressed gene from LI, so all these hybrid daughters will live. But these daughters, since their grandmother is LI, can either get the expressed gene from LI that will cause hybrid mortality, right here, or the unexpressed gene from LC, which will not cause hybrid mortality. And that could explain this asymmetric pattern that we're seeing. So in the future, I'm going to take my LC LI integration line and make them back to LC males, and take my LI LC integration line and make them back to LI males. Then I want to take those daughters and make them to vitropenis males. So if there is, if this nuclear maternal effect hypothesis with maternal imprinting is correct, we would expect half of the hybrid daughters here to live and all these hybrid daughters here to live since their grandmother had LI nuclear DNA and the grandmother of these hybrid females had LC DNA. So in conclusion, I began this talk by talking about Charles Darwin and his famous book on the origin of species, and he had called speciation the mystery of mysteries. Um, but over 150 years later, we're beginning to unravel this mystery by studying animals such as the lightning bug, mule, and of course, Nisonia. And through my work on the genetics of speciation reproductive isolation Nisonia, we can begin to have a look at the molecular underpinnings of speciation, which is something only Darwin could have dreamed of. And I'd just like to thank everyone in my lab, who's sitting back there, and um, of course the USRP and the Little John family for supplying